One thing that made vanilla World of Warcraft stand out across all versions of the game ever is how the world was built and their content was designed. It wasn't this meticulous, thoroughly tested and balanced world. It was much more akin to a bunch of developers having the chance to do something with a cool, brand new world with limitless opportunities. And when you take that world and bring it back over a decade later, it's amazing to see all the ways players have discovered to truly unearth every possible secret and all the ways they've optimised their characters. Take World Boss in Classic WoW for example. Kevin Jordan, one of the three original vanilla developers and class designer for vanilla, was once asked about them on stream, to which he replied simply with, there was no oversight for it. It was just a bunch of dudes making content that was cool, and a bunch of people working independently putting in stuff like that because it was a cool way to reward you for a quest or an activity. And that's really part of the essence of vanilla, which made it something memorable, because because there was a lot of cool things that some dude had put in the game. In fact, there were loads of them. So what happens when you have an entire world of random cool things then? Well, that is the subject for today's video. So be it a quest reward, a player discovery, or other, these are some of the weirdest ways players have discovered to optimize their characters in vanilla. So early on in the Barrens Hall, players will come across Camp Taraho. Seems like your fairly standard little outpost and quest hub, but there's an NPC here that can actually provide some useful buffs even for maximum level characters. Just inside the cage near the flight path is the Quillbore Mangletooth. Players can complete a quest for him after which they'll have the chance to hand in blood shards which are farmed from Quillbores out in the barrens. You can do this in exchange for several different buffs. Now most of these buffs are pretty small, 10 extra strength, agility or intellect and they're not half bad for the level you can get them at. But for some reason two of these buffs are not just flat stats, they are percentages instead. These are the Spirit of the Wind for 10 blood shards. This provides a 30% increase to movement speed, which is undispellable. However, it does only last for 5 minutes, so uses are very niche, if any at all. More interestingly is Razor Hide for only 4 blood shards. Now, the tooltip here is your vanilla classic. It does something, but we're not going to tell you what it does. However, if you test it in-game or check online, the damage reflect is only a really small value, not worth mentioning. However, the bonus armor is 25 percent and the buff lasts for 10 minutes now 25 percent extra armor i don't think i have to say but it's a lot when we're talking about a geared warrior or a feral druid tank in fact even during naxxramas progression horde guilds could take advantage of this short-term buff on the tanks during bosses which hit your tanks particularly hard such as patchwork for instance making this a level 14 quest reward usable on some of the hardest raiding content in the game how about we cover some more probably unintended buff uses in raiding. Another one that was pretty widely used was the fire resist buff available in Lower Blackrock Spire. So you're going to know that Blackrock Mountain houses Molten Core and plenty of other dungeons, meaning they're all fairly close together. And the last boss in Molten Core is of course Ragnaros. Now what Rag does is a ton of fire damage, and a lot of it is unavoidable fire damage between Lava Splash for some random AoE and Wrath of Ragnaros which has a nasty knockback on it which can then even chain knock you into lava. It's a good idea idea to bring some fire resist to add a little bit of leeway where your gear may be lacking on those first few kills. Also definitely worth a mention, resistant stats in vanilla were very important on a number of bosses. The higher your resist stat went against a certain element, the higher percentage chance you had to reduce damage taken by a certain percentage, which all averaged out, and it scaled with how much resist gear you wore. But what if you could get a bunch of resistances for free, allowing you to keep on more combat effective gear? Well, you could. Inside of Lower Black Rock Spire were Scar Shield Spellbinders. Players found that you could mind control these mobs and then use their fire resist buff on others, adding a huge plus 81 fire resist buff to raid members which would last for an entire hour. Adding on a fire resist totem or aura for an extra 60 would leave you around 141, which without any other resist going on would reduce damage taken on average by around 33%, which isn't half bad. Oh, and in case you're wondering how long it took to buff if you needed your entire raid to go into a dungeon? Well, in Classic, you could take 10 people into most dungeons. You could 10-man the dead mines if you really wanted to. Who knows, just Classic things. There were also some mobs in Eastern Plaguelands which did something quite similar called Scarlet Medics. However, their buff was for one hour of extra arcane resist. And a boss we needed tons of arcane resist just never cropped up in Classic. We had Rag that needed fire, Visidus needed nature, Saffron needed frost, and so on. And if you ever did need this arcane 
damage this buff, it would have been super easy to get as the Scarlet Medics are just standing around in the open world. There was also a buff from Black Fathom's Deep, strangely enough. Now, I don't think many active raiders went out of their way to get this since, well, Black Fathom's Deep is really in the middle of nowhere and this buff is right at the end of the dungeon. But you can click an orb called the Altar of the Deeps after the last boss and gain a small one hour buff that gives you some extra intellect, spirit and 15 extra frost spell damage. Mages were actually playing frost early on during classic in Molten Core and Blackwing Lure because they're both full of bosses which were immune to fire and 15 extra damage at that early stage of the game is not as bad as it sounds. Also at the end of Black Fathom's Deep there was this random NPC that would teleport alliance players to Darnassus and for Horde it's Hearthstone Hall Walk. The final random buff I want to go over here came on quite late in the game when AQ40 was released. As part of a new world PvP event, random dusty red looking nobs would spawn out in Silithus. Players could click on these and carry them back to their nearby faction camp. When you were carrying them, you couldn't mount or gain any movement speed increases. I guess the overall idea here was for you to go and hunt down enemy faction players trying to turn in and steal them for yourselves. Anyways, once you successfully hand in, you'll get a buff called Traces of Silithus. This short 30 minute buff would provide a further 5% damage to melee and spell damage, which means, at least according to the tooltip, no buff for hunters as attack power was split into melee and ranged back then unfortunate. Oh also fun fact, this buff was eventually banned on Warcraft logs for classic due to the fact you'd have to get this buff last after all the others because it only lasts 30 minutes, whilst in a zone where you were auto flagged for PvP on PvP servers and you couldn't mount. The griefers would have been out in full force to catch people out with well buffs there, though I think overall the idea was to save themselves a bit of sanity. Moving on though, quest rewards. This was peak random dudes doing some cool stuff design. Many of these items are just insanely overpowered despite being able to be farmed at a lower level. Many of these were even tradable for a time, though none of them were during Classic due to us playing on the final patch. Biggest of all is, so many of them were faction specific. I have two interesting ones for the Horde and two for the Alliance. Horde first. We need to start off with a level 6 quest. A lot of these really weird items come from very low level content actually. This was available near the Undead starting area in the town of Brill. The quest A New Plague had you go out and simply farm some fins from nearby murlocs. Upon handing in you were given 5 slumber sand, which could be used to instantly put a target to sleep for up to 20 seconds. And of course this is classic, so we don't have silly things like level restrictions. It worked on any player of any level and of course getting a 20 second escape that's instant cast on a one minute cooldown that's not half bad but this was just a one time quest for the horde only or was it? Well no actually anyone could go and farm these items. Dust devils out in Westfall were fairly rare mobs that roamed around the zone and they have a low chance to drop magic dust which does the exact same thing so if you really wanted some of this stuff for for example opening the chest in the middle of the Gurubashi arena, you very much could go and farm it. The other Horde quest reward I have in mind was from a level 5 quest called A Solvent Spirit from Senjin Village just outside the Valley of Trials. This had you go and collect some items from nearby crawlers and Makura. The quest reward was 10 times really sticky galoo, which instantly rooted a target for 10 seconds on a 1 minute cooldown. Just like the sand, pretty handy tool to have in your bag when you need to make a heroic play in a battleground or just outplay during a gang, but the items the Alliance got were arguably even better. Starting off in Goldshire, we have the quest Gold Dust Exchange. For this, you need to surprisingly go and collect some gold dust from a nearby cobalt mine, and this quest is available at level 4, mind you. The reward was a bag of marbles with 10 charges, of course it being on a 1 minute cooldown like everything else, and its effect was to reduce the target's chance to hit by 25%. These were tradable right up to the final patch of World of Warcraft and I'm pretty sure they were made bind on pickup because of Nax Ramus progression. And even in classic, some players save these for Nax, and that's because this 25% hit chance reduction effect, for some reason, 
worked on raid bosses. Old Wowhead had comments pointing out how good this would be on Maxner, for example. Imagine Web Spray having a 1 in 4 chance to miss you, or what about patchwork progression? Cutting his hit chance down by that much is like giving your tank a huge mitigation boost. It was a truly unique and niche item, though it's pretty clear to see why it was eventually made by Don Pickup. The final item is arguably the most single powerful one use quest reward consumable which has ever been put in the game, and for once this isn't a super low level quest, nor was this item ever tradable as far as I could tell. This was a reward from the level 25 quest Mage Summoner, and it gave the Light of a Loon, which is more or less a paladin bubble in a bottle. Any class in the game could go completely immune to all spells and effects for 10 seconds. To this day, some people still have this sitting in their bank, waiting for that time when they need to be the one person alive at the end of a raid encounter, or to survive some impossible battle. Be careful when you use it though, this item only has one charge. Let's move on to some weird raid optimizations. So you'll probably remember, back in Classic, Shaman was Horde only, Paladin was Alliance only, and that created some big differences in the raiding and PvP scenes. Horde had the terror of the Elemental Shaman globaling you in a battleground, as well as a nice easy ride on Visidus thanks to Poison Cleansing Totem. Whilst Alliance had tons of passive support tools from the Paladin, as well as a healer that once had late game gear, quite literally could not go oom, even if they tried. So Holy Paladins had this talent called Illumination, which made it so when their spells crit, they gain 100% of the base mana cost. Or in other words, the spell was free. This effect was so powerful, it got nerfed to 60% effectiveness in TBC and down to 30% in Wrath. You can already tell how busted it would have got late game. But whilst Alliance raids were able to go 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 non-stop thanks to a never-ending supply of healing, Horde were not. Their counterpart Restoration Shamans didn't even have Water Shield back then. Due to this, Horde speedrunning guilds had to start getting pretty creative when it came to finding ways to keep themselves moving forwards in a race, and it was during the opening night of Naxxramas 14 Classic where one such Horde guild on North America, Onslaught, showed exactly the extent that you could go with this. Consumable use has always been a talking point in Classic, and during this raid Onslaught went through, for example, 231 great Greater Shadow Protection Potions, 170 Greater Frost Protection Potions, and 46 Flask of the Titans. But most surprisingly was the fact the healer team overall used 133 Flasks of Distilled Wrath. Now back in Classic, unlike Wrath of the Lich King, Flasks were not cheap. Each needed around 40 herbs total, as well as a Black Lotus. These were rare spawns in high level zones, so popping a flask really felt like a commitment. That being so, how did they go through 133 in one night if it's a 40 man raid? Well, you see, back in Classic, Distilled Wisdom didn't just increase your intellect as it did in TBC and beyond, it increased your maximum mana by 2000. As in, if you were on zero mana and you pop one of these flasks, you're now at 2000 mana. I think you can see where this is going going by now. Players in these guild were chain popping flasks which could have easily cost around 150 to 200 gold worth of materials as if they were mana potions. And you could spam flasks, they had no cooldown other than the global one of course. And again, if you think 100 to 200 gold sounds expensive now, you probably want to count a good 8 to 10 times inflation between then in Nax 40 and now in Wrath of the Lich King Nax. Still, in the end, they got world first Horde Nax Ramus 40 for putting in this extra effort. And that out of raid preparation was really what classic speedruns were all about. It's stuff like this why people remember vanilla. And with today's far more min maxi oriented MMO crowd, so much more of it has been uncovered. It does turn out, though, that a few do throwing pretty cool ideas together create something which is very difficult to replicate. Any other things from Vanilla which you think are worth a mention? I have been enjoying doing these retrospectives a lot so far and I'm getting that feeling I just may have to do one about the opening of AQ40 because it was a truly different beast in Classic compared to Vanilla. Whatever it is though do drop it down below. And before I end a quick thanks to everyone who made suggestions on the previous video it was a ton of help for this one. But that is all for today. As always guys thank you all so much for watching and listening in and i'll see you all on the next one very soon